Welcome to Monday Night Live on All Things Billy the Kid. Now let's join your host, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Here's Michael. Hey gang, it's me, Michael Anthony Giudicissi. Welcome to All Things Billy the Kid. As you can see, I'm not in the studio and it's not 6 p.m. Eastern time. <laughs> so sorry about the uh, last minute change of time, but I am in Texas, as you might be able to tell by the flag on the wall. And uh, today I became a proper Texan again. We closed on the property here that we were, we've been looking at. And so I was out here doing the closing paperwork and uh, doing some other things. So here we are. Um, and it uh, looks like a few of you have made it. Sandra Rollin. Tammy, go, go, Gonzo, and Will all here. Um, hopefully the others will. Oh, there's Amy. Uh, hopefully the, the others will catch up and you got some sort of notification from YouTube. What have I been reading? Well, what have you been reading? The Runes of Legend, the bestseller in my catalog from Ingram Spark, who's my distributor. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. If you haven't read it, you should um, because because uh, I think it's good. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, please go and uh, go to Amazon and check out the Runes of Legend or start with the first book, Back to Billy, um, and get the whole uh, the whole uh, story going. Hey, it's Debbie from Chicago, Casper the Ghost. Debbie from Chicago, that seems like a new one, is it? Is it a new name, Debbie from Chicago, or uh, first time here? But anyway, nice to have you all here. So uh, we're early. We're going to have the entire show. We've got some good stuff. B.L. Atterbury from Oklahoma. Well, B.L. I think it's B.L. I'm, I'm, I'm right there. I'm just about 10 miles south of the Oklahoma border in Nakona, Texas today. So uh, nice to uh, nice to have you, Lori Alexander. Wow, everybody's filing in, 36 of you. All right. So it's been two weeks. Um, lots to catch you up on. And uh, we should get started with that. First things first, we are up. Uh, I'm working with a with an interesting internet connection. I am staying in a place in the middle of a big uh, a big hay farm. Uh, there's no internet here, so I'm using my phone. Uh, hopefully, it holds out for the duration. If not, I don't know what we'll try. Chris Cossey from the UK. Good evening. All right, this coming Friday, July the 14th. 2023, just so you know, for those of you, those of you who have already let me know, you don't need to do anything else, but we're going to be in Fort Sumner. This is not an official event, but we're, we're going to meet down in Fort Sumner uh, for the 142nd anniversary of the demise of our friend William H. Bonnie, alias Billy the Kid. Um, as a quick what's going on, the monument closes at 4 p.m., so we need to be there by 3.30 if you want to walk back to the site of the old Maxwell House, get a lay of the land of the old fort. Um, our friend uh, Brandon has got us a restaurant, a uh, reservation at a restaurant in town. I think we can fit a dozen of us for uh, dinner, so somewhere around, oh, I don't know, 5, 5.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. Um, then uh, about 8 p.m., we will head over to the cemetery, essentially whenever we finish dinner, I guess. And we'll do a little tour of the cemetery, give you the lay of the land, let you know it's there. And then you're free, <laughs> you're free at any time, but free to do whatever you want until about 11 p.m. We'll meet back there and we'll see at 11.57 um, if, uh, well, what's going to happen? I, you know, 142 years ago, something happened and uh, hopefully nothing that dramatic will happen this Friday night, but, um, yeah, come on out. I, I feel like I hear <laughs> footsteps, but there shouldn't be anybody in here with me. Maybe that's a preview of what's going to happen on Friday night in old Fort Sumner. So there you go. All right. Uh, hope to see many of you out there should be a fun time, uh, wear pants, <laughs> uh, because the bugs were incredibly, uh, if, if you have long sleeves, wear those, uh, after dark, I'm sure it's fine. But at that, you know, uh, late afternoon to dusk hour, it was pretty, pretty rough. There's Ray. Um, Debbie from Chicago has been here before, so that's all good. So, all right, here we go. All right. I uh, want to share something with you because I was, was actually uh, somewhat surprised. And uh, I guess I get surprised easily, but this one 
caught me by surprise. Uh, there was a poll. I put a poll up. <laughs> I love saying that. Yeah, I had my poll up and <laughs> and it was this one. Uh, by the way, I'm working with only one monitor, half the technology I usually do. So if I get a little crossways with the sharing stuff, my apologies in advance. Um, if if this if the documentation existed, none of these things exist as far as we know. Um, but if the documentation existed, what would you love to read? Uh, you know, what would be the uh, what would be the thing that you would love to read? And you can see it's a runaway. 78%, almost 8 out of 10 people said Garrett's note to a friend telling them what really happened in Fort Sumner that night. Hey, Misty James. Uh, so 8 out of 10 of you, essentially 20% of you split all the rest of the uh, opportunities. And I, I get it, right? I understand that Garrett and... Uh, uh, and the, uh, many, many people believe he either lied about it or he massaged the story or he never killed um, Billy. So, you know, we want the truth. Um, but there's some other good ones on there. And they didn't really rate very highly. Billy's goodbye letter to his mother. And then I thought about this after the poll was launched. How about if Billy's mother had written a goodbye letter to him, talking about her hopes, her dreams, what she was wanting to see for her sons, you know, well, you know, whatever, what she felt about uh, William Antrim, those kind of things. Uh, that would have been really interesting. And, uh, but of course, uh, we don't have that. But Billy, did he have a goodbye letter to his mother? I'm going to, excuse me one second, I'm going to grab my phone, which I'm using as a hot spot, and see if I can get it. Get a better signal here. I don't know if I can or not, but uh, we'll see. All right. Um, oh, yeah, we're having some. We're having some uh, some uh, uh, internet connection issues or streaming issues. So my apologies. If I have to. I'll have to just stream directly from my phone, which means you'll have to go back to YouTube and start it over. So I'm going to give it another minute or two and see if it resolves. Otherwise, we'll do that. Um, the uh, the next uh, place, uh, Boundary's letter to Garrett. You know, what did Charlie really wish? What did he want? What was his, uh, you know, what, uh, we don't have a, anybody who uh, was there at the meeting with Pat Garrett, so... We don't know exactly what was talked about. We have a rough idea, um, but maybe Bowdry writes a letter to Garrett at the end and says, hey, here's what I wish for. And then in his final moments, he tries to reiterate that. Um, how about Lou Wallace writing down exactly what happened at his meeting with Billy after he meets with him for the first time in Lincoln? I think that one would be pretty interesting. And um, we would probably have a better idea whether Wallace took Billy seriously. Maybe he would have written, uh, I have no intent of ever, <laughs> you know, honoring my agreement with this guy, um, you know, something along those lines. But uh, we don't get we don't get any of that from Wallace. We just get the official record from the uh, uh, yeah, from the uh, uh, the letters that he sends. And uh, and that's kind of it. So that one would have been interesting. Uh, but the one that got no play whatsoever, none, no play at all. Jesse Evans letter from prison telling how he'll escape. And I thought, I really thought, Hey, wait a minute. If Evans writes this letter and says, here's how I'm going to escape. And here's where I'm going to go. I thought that would be a major historical revelation right? Here's how I'm going to disappear into history and no one's ever going to, you don't even know what I look like because you don't have a photo of me that's confirmed. And uh, also I, uh, <laughs> I'm i going to escape and no one's ever going to hear from me again. I thought that would be, you know, really kind of a, a, an exciting, I don't know, uh, for lack of a better term, um, Re historical revelation, but nobody, <laughs> nobody seemed to <laughs> to care about it, and uh, so no, Jesse Evans, one percent. That's uh, essentially 
two votes, maybe one vote uh, for somebody that was interested in that. So, yeah, poor Jesse Evans. So I want to talk more about Garrett and what this letter could say. Um, but uh, can somebody give me a little report on am I coming through? In other words, can you hear me and see me or is it all broken up? Because on my end, it's not looking great. So anybody that can uh, drop me a comment in the chat uh, would be helpful to let me know if if um, if you're able to even see and hear me. If not, we need to take a different. Uh, oh, we don't need Siri. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm going to wait patiently here for a few more seconds, and then I'm doing good here. Oh, B.L. Atterbury. Okay, okay. Uh, here you see. Okay, I guess I'm doing fine. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, so let's go to the Garrett thing, since that's what everybody was interested in. Garrett's notes, friend. Which, it, it started me thinking, which parts of Garrett's story do you think are a lie? In other words, do you think the entire thing is a lie or which part would he change to make himself look better, sound better, uh, you know, historically, uh, you know, come off better? Because I don't think he would change the entire story. Like he, that would be silly because then he had two deputies there. He had Pete Maxwell there. He had other people. So which parts of the story make sense to you that Garrett would change. So we should go from the beginning of the story. Garrett rides into Fort Sumner that night with Poe and McKinney. Do we think he was with his deputies? I do. Yeah, they were, they were, they both gave accounts of that later in life. So I don't think that Garrett uh, snuck into Fort Sumner on his own and assassinated Billy and then had his guys lie for it. Um, there were other eyewitnesses, you know, that certainly saw Poe and McKinney there after the fact. So Probably didn't lie about that. Um, the next thing is that they set up in the peach orchard and they are surveilling the Maxwell house and essentially the eastern block of uh, buildings of the fort where uh, it seems like the that Billy would have been um, where some of his friends live. So do we think that they did not go to the peach orchard? Do we think that they were hiding somewhere else? Well, I think that's one you could say, hey, wait a minute. That's a good story. But they didn't do that. Garrett you know, left his horse outside of town, climbed through a window and held uh, Paulette at gunpoint or something like that, whatever you might believe. So so that's, you know, potentially one area where you might think eh, he didn't quite tell the truth. Uh, they see two people having an amorous relationship in the peach orchard, or they hear it, see it, whatever it might be. And uh, they later figure out that this was Billy. Uh, again, I don't know how you figure that out later, unless Paulita or Celsa or Abrana or somebody comes forward and says, oh, yeah, Billy and I were knocking boots back in the peach orchard. Didn't you see us? <laughs> and uh, so... They, they could have made that up. And somebody made a point in one of the comments that that was made up to protect Paulita's uh, reputation. So in other words, Garrett found them together, found them in the house or wherever. And so they made up this entire peach orchard story so that uh, uh, Garrett or Paulita's reputation could be spared. And they didn't say who it was. So, okay, maybe that's it. Then the next thing is Garrett uh, and his deputies go to the porch of the Maxwell house. And Garrett says, uh, I'm paraphrasing, but he says, you know, we're going to go and see if Pete knows anything. And now it's close to midnight. So if you believe that the peach orchard was a story and Garrett was in the house or somewhere else, um, oh, Drew Cannon, Cannoneer, Knocking Boots. Yeah, you like that one, Drew? <laughs> um, if you believe that uh, Garrett made up the Peach Tortured story, then going to Pete's bedroom uh, from the outside and stationing his deputies on the porch is also probably a falsehood, right? It's probably not uh, the way that things happened because you don't believe Garrett came in from the outside anyway. So I guess that could be it. Then there's the whole, you know, this guy walks up, he's fastening his trousers or messing with his pants. 
and uh, he goes to Poe and McKinney and covers them with his gun when when he when he's surprised by them. Kines, Kines, Garrett's inside, kind of hears something going out on the porch. Um, I think this is probably the the biggest area where you could go. All right, if I don't believe if I believe Pat Garrett's a liar, then I think this is all a lie. Like this is all too. Uh, simple that the guy they want just comes walking up and walks right past his deputies who are there to protect their boss and they don't take any action whatsoever. They essentially don't. They go, hey, we're not here to hurt you. And they let him, they let whoever this guy is walk right in on their boss in the middle of an interrogation near midnight on July 14, 1881. Um, okay. That I could say sounds a little far-fetched or completely inept when you <laughs> talk about the skills of Poe and McKinney. Uh, they don't say anything. Nobody goes, hey, Pat, there's a guy coming in. Um, they don't draw their guns. They don't question the guy any further. They just say, hey, we're not here to hurt you. And they let him just march into the room. Uh, who did they think it was? Did they think it was Pete Maxwell? I, I, I don't know that either of them, uh, you know, Poe didn't know Billy, probably had never been to Fort Sumner to meet, meet Pete Maxwell, so he probably didn't know him. Uh, so it's that's a little bit of a sketchy part of the story. And then, of course, the next part, that which, you know, is the, the part that we all <laughs> remember, Billy backs in, Pete, who are those guys on the porch? Uh, Pete yells, that's him. Yeah, Billy has his gun within a foot of Garrett's chest. He doesn't fire. Garrett draws, fires one shot, two shots, but one shot hitting Billy in the ventricles just above, I think, just above the heart, and Billy falls dead. Garrett fires a second shot and runs out, uh, <laughs> followed by Pete Maxwell, who's screaming like a little girl. <laughs> oh, gosh. Um <laughs> that part, I guess I believe. So uh, that, again, seems very, to me, if there's any discrepancy, it's that. The guy walked right into the room, put a gun to your chest, noticed somebody was there, and didn't do anything about it. Did essentially nothing about it. Just allowed Pete Maxwell, or just allowed Garrett to pull his gun. And he's sitting on his gun. He's got to roll off, grab his gun, cock it, remember, single action uh, colt and fire. That, it, it doesn't seem impossible that it happened, but it seems all very uh, tidy, a nice tidy story. Uh, Rollin believes that <laughs> the part about Pete Maxwell screaming like a little girl. <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I kind of see that. So, which part of it, in other words, if Garrett left a note or, or wrote some tell-all to a friend and, uh, and, and left it behind or the friend saved it, which part would you think would change? Or do you think the entire story would change? Do you think Garrett was hiding in the hallway behind a red velvet settee, I think that's what it's called, uh, or sofa, with a shotgun and blasted Billy's face off? Uh, that seems pretty horrific. I mean, that that's <laughs> that's violent. I, I guess, you know, killing is violent. So, yeah, who knows? Um, do you believe that uh, Garrett catches Billy and Paulita in the same room? And, uh, you know, Billy goes for his gun, pull, pulls Paulita off the bed, and Garrett blasts him laying there in the bed. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you believe that? Um, in other words, what is it that, you would want to find in that letter. But here's the key thing. Would it change anything? I mean, Garrett's reputation is so poor for reasons I can't comprehend. And I, I say that honestly. Pat Garrett has a reputation as being a liar and a back shooter. And, a, and he's done really nothing to earn that reputation by this point in his life. So, I, I mean, historically, he got a pretty bad deal. But aside from that, it wouldn't change anything. Billy would still be dead. Garrett would still be alive. Um, so does the matter or the manner of the killing really mean anything historically? Or would it just be something that would satisfy you? Because 80% of you, 80% of you believe that 
Garrett wasn't telling the truth because that's, I'm assuming that's the reason you want to read what note he would write to a friend saying, Hey, I told everybody this BS story, but here's what really happened. I'd love for somebody to write the story, to rewrite it. I guess I'm a writer. Maybe I could do it. <laughs> I'd love for somebody to rewrite the story of, uh, of that night and tell it the way that you think it happened, you know, start to finish, right? To, this, I don't believe Garrett. So here's what I believe happened. Like I would love to read that. And uh, maybe we should have a story writing contest. I think that actually would be cool. Maybe we could do that. Um, maybe we have a contest and you all can write your, uh, uh, your version of this. And then we can see which one we believe or have a prize for the best one. Um, pretty cool. All right. Lori Alexander says, just the fact that he walked past the deputies tells you they were acquainted and that it was a setup. Uh, that may be Lori Alexander. But what, what Poe says is we didn't recognize the guy. We thought he could be one of Maxwell's workers. And that's why we didn't, you know, accost him. Um, it seems weird that somebody's walking into Pete Maxwell's house at midnight, you know, like none of my employees back when I had my consulting company <laughs> walked into my house at midnight to uh, to get a steak or to do anything. So it does seem a little strange and out of place. I would assume that even in those days, midnight was kind of the time where you uh, where you would start to roll it back and uh, not have visitors. Um Rollins says Lucian Maxwell uh, reportedly thought Peter was something of a wimp with poor choices for friends. Ah, that's probably true. Um, I, I feel like Lucian grudgingly left uh, Pete in charge when he was going to pass away because um, because he you know just didn't have anybody else to do it. Lori Alexander, I believe, will never know the real truth. I feel Garrett may have felt bad for killing Billy. I believe what you said in that first half of the sentence, Lori. I, well, we will never know the real truth. It absolutely impossible for us to know other than if we can um, uh, figure out time travel. I think that's the only way that we could do it. Uh, Rollin says Poe wrote that he saw Paulita in a state that sounds like total shock, unable to speak even. Well, I've heard it described a couple different ways. Um, that Paulita was almost emotionless and just stared at the body and didn't really say anything. That sounds like shock. But it could also be just not caring. Yeah, he's dead. Who cares? I mean, we don't know which one it was. Um, if she was an intimate with Billy, it probably was shock. If uh, Pete had gotten to her and said, hey, you're not, I know you're not seeing Billy, but he's bad news around here and he's got to go. And she was expecting this, then, um, then maybe it was just disdain or indifference drew says billy's story is a big game of chinese whispers everyone has added to it and the rest is lost in history yeah the one thing that we know or at least we're relatively sure of is that billy died that night i'm i'm sure he died that night uh, with a 99 percent certainty but um but the rest of it i think is uh, up for grabs and Lori correctly says history is written by the victor. And that's true. Poe and, uh, and McKinney and Garrett won and, uh, and Billy didn't. Uh, <laughs> Misty James wants to know, is this our assignment for the next time? I would love for you to submit. Do, let's do this. If you want, I'll, I'll come up with a cool prize. Um, if you want to uh, enter uh, before our next show, which is two weeks from tonight, I want you to email to billythekidridesagain at gmail.com. You can type it out in an email. I want your version of what happened that night. And I don't want one sentence, uh, Garrett was hiding in a room and ambushed Billy. I want some detail, you know, put a little thought into it, put a little time, tell us where they came from, tell us who was where, tell us who was who was with, et cetera, uh, who was with who. Uh, that would be, I think that would be very cool. And I will come up with... Um, uh, with a, uh, a, a prize of some sort. Bullyhead, one of my favorite names, TM, trademark. Now he's trademarking the bullyhead. Let's say if Billy did survive that night, if he shot above the heart, how could he have survived? Could he had a, <laughs> could he had a coat pocket full of tin types that protected his heart? Could, could have bled and faked it. Uh, yeah, all, they were all tin, all pictures of him. And we're going to have another potential Billy, the kid picture tonight. So that's a good one. Bill, uh, bully hit. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, but, uh, or he had a flask or something, but, um, 
yeah, I, you know, Garrett fired. I mean, people heard bullets fired, um, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know that <laughs> that tin type saved him. Wouldn't that be the ultimate irony that we're all arguing over tin types and that's what saved Billy from dying? Lori says they let him pass Paul McKinney because they didn't want to take responsibility for Garrett's actions. Um, uh, hmm, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it it really is the, their their own action or inaction. Um, I think it's their inaction that you know should be taking responsibility. David wants to know: Do you think he was set up or just a twist of fate? I I'm, I, I like to uh, when I evaluate and read things, I go: Does this you know does this make sense? Is this reasonable? And almost everything of what Garrett said happened is reasonable, although. There certainly could be a lot of other things. So it's easy to accept Garrett's um, account at essentially at face value for me and go, yeah, pretty much something like that happened. But with that said, uh, we think that Pete, uh, through one of his his guys, gave the tip that uh, that Billy was in the area. It's pretty clear that Pete Maxwell by that time was not a friend of Billy and probably would have just preferred he had gone away and he didn't. Um I, I can't rule out the fact that he was set up. I mean, he was certainly set up in that somebody gave Garrett a tip that he was in Fort Sumner. Was he set up even uh, more thoroughly? You know, his girlfriend kidnapped or held or somebody was uh, said, hey, you know, they've got Selsa and you've got to come and help her. Like, I, who knows? Um, but we're certainly we're certainly not going to know the truth. Unless Misty James is right by saying Paulita shot him because she caught Billy in the peach orchard with her best friend. Uh, that, um, <laughs> that's pretty good, Misty. You're going to have to write that as your, uh, whoops, as your entry. Utter, uh, sorry, Siri is jumping up again. Uh, utter, U-T-R, I don't know how to say that. Utter, utter at it, utter at it. I don't know. Chano Silva's story sounds right. Shotgun by Garrett. Yeah, that's uh, Chano did tell that story. The Garrett shot him in the face with a shotgun. Um, I, I don't know why you need to shoot somebody in the face. I mean, Garrett w was I, m maybe he did. I don't know. Garrett using a shotgun is uh, out of character for him. Um, shooting somebody in the face with a shotgun is a very personal act. I don't know that this was personal to Garrett. Uh, so I again, we're just not going to know. We're not going to know. But it's important to at least have your own opinion. Um, so there you go. Uh, Lori says, Billy bought Garrett boots when he had no money at one point in his past. He may have set him up for the reward. Garrett always wanted money. I've never heard that Billy bought Garrett boots when Garrett had no money. That's a story I've never heard anywhere. Um, so I'd love to know the origin of that. So anyway. All right. So uh, the other thing is, I would love to hear what <laughs> non-existent historical documents you would love to read. In other words, which ones would you, uh, if you were to discover, would you love to see uh, so you could uh, follow and trace the history even more? But it's pretty clear based on this poll that people really, really, really uh, think that Pat Garrett was not telling the truth. And that the truth will set them free. But it won't change the final outcome. Garrett one, Billy the Kid zero. Well, Garrett maybe three because he killed Bowdry and Folliard, uh, and then Billy and Billy the Kid zero. Um, David makes a, a fair point. Whoops. How about this? Uh, you would have thought if it was a setup, Garrett would have used a shotgun, taking a hell of a chance using a pistol. Um, yeah, but there's a lot of people who have been shot by shotguns that don't die. I mean, you know, you get a good spread on those pellets and you might take 15 pellets to the body and pull your gun and shoot back. Shoot somebody in the face with a shotgun. I've seen people survive that. There's a horrific picture on the Internet of a guy that tried to kill himself with a shotgun and failed, shot himself in the face. And it does not look pretty. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't know. I'm not a shotgun guy, so I couldn't tell you, uh, Garrett split the reward with Maxwell. $500 was not much of a reward. $250 would not even, it wouldn't even be worth Maxwell's time for all the, uh, you know, the bad press that he got after that. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know about that. But anyway, all right. So I uh, appreciate you all uh, 
partaking in that. If you've got other ideas of what kind of things should be, um, uh, should be there, then uh, by all means, let me know. Misty James says, prevents an open casket, shotgun to the face. It's an insult. Well, um, I don't, I don't think that there's a, there's a casket involved until the next morning. Um, by all accounts, Billy had a wake held for him. And if Garrett shotgunned him in the face, I don't know that most people could keep their dinner down if they are, um, you know, looking at, uh, you know, Billy laid out on a carpenter's bench with candles around him and his face looks like hamburger. So from that standpoint, even the people that that were friends of Billy that said they held awake, um, that makes me believe that the shotgun to the face is probably not accurate. Probably not accurate. But anyway, uh, something that is accurate is that Lincoln <laughs> uh, needs you. Yeah, Lincoln, New Mexico needs you. Uh, they need you to go down to uh, see the sites, to talk to the folks there, to learn more about Billy the Kid and um, to, uh, you know, help the uh, <laughs> help the struggling Lincoln economy a little bit. And the way you can do that is with this. Or this. Walk the most <laughs> dangerous street in America with tour guide Brandon Dixon. Walk in the footsteps of Billy the Kid and the Regulators. Find out what really happened during the Lincoln County War. See all the sights, learn all the history, and relive the most dangerous time in New Mexico territory. Brandon Dixon brings it all to you in the most dangerous street tours. Reservations required. Call 972-358-5980 or email us at mostdangerousTours at gmail.com. All right, that's right. Get out and see Brandon. Um, hey, I saw that there's another most dangerous, like a midnight or a nighttime tour or something, which is cool. Um, I, that's, I don't think Brandon's involved in that one. But one of the things is, you know, you go on one of those tours, I don't know, maybe it's once a year, you might get 50 or 100 people. That's 150th or 1-100th of the attention of the tour guide. You go with Brandon, he'll take you one-on-one. -on -one. But I don't mean like he'll fight you one on one. He might if, if you get out of line, but he'll take one, seven, three. I mean, whatever the number of people is, if you want really that personalized attention, you want your questions answered. Um, you want to see specific things that the other tour is not uh, covering. You got to get in touch with Brandon and uh, uh, at most dangerous tours at gmail.com and book your own tour for Lincoln or the old Murphy Brewery or San Patricio or the Tunstall murder site or any of those things. Um, I would uh, absolutely uh, authorize, not authorize, uh, you know, support. Uh, I think, uh, I think it's a great use of your time and it's it do it early in your trip if you're going to go to lincoln or billy the kid country for three or four days don't wait till the end do it at the beginning right see everything all the key stuff and then when you're on your own you can go back and investigate a little further or take another look back there um uh you know those kind of things so uh yeah most dangerous tours at gmail.com and the new motorcycle tour of Billy the Kid Country from uh, Brandon, you can uh, you can get involved in that too if you're a motorcycle rider. So there you go. All right. Uh, I am going to sh stop sharing that. All right. You wanted to see another picture of Billy the Kid. <laughs> I don't know that you actually wanted to see another picture of Billy the Kid, but I'm going to show you one. So this one comes from, I like to come up with these outlandish names because I don't know that, whoops, that's not what we wanted. Let me get that out of the way. Um, so let's come up with a good name. Uh, 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 Josefina. How's that? I remember that was one of the American girl dolls that my daughter had when she was a little, a little girl. Josefina. Uh, this photo comes from Josefina. It's out of North Carolina. Um, and you might think, all right, well, what does North Carolina have to do with Billy the Kid? And the answer is nothing that we know of. Um, but that doesn't mean that the photo was taken there. It means that that's where it's found 
now. Um, would you like to see it? I think you would. So let's have a look at a possible new Billy the Kid photo. And there he is. All right. Uh, let me uh, make old Billy a little bigger. Um, I, I've got a side-by-side -side comparison for you so you can take a look at it. But my initial thought when I saw this one here, let me make this guy a little stand out a little more. Uh, when I saw this guy is, hmm, maybe. Uh, if you look at the body type, it seems to kind of mirror what we would uh, think or see or expect of Billy. You know, not very broad shoulders, maybe a little wider in the hips, but really loose clothing. Um, uh, Drew says that's what she said. I'm not sure what, what I said. I'm sure that's funny, Drew, but <laughs> I, I missed what I said that uh, would, would do that. Uh, but here we go. Uh, he's got the, the dark hair. Um, he's got the clothes that are a couple sizes too big. Looks kind of pigeon chested, right? Not real broad across the chest. Um, so uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Let me uh, get to a closer version and see here. Uh, tough to tell on the ears. Uh, let's see if we can go in a little further. Yeah, looks kind of straight in earlobes, so tough to tell there. The mouth is kind of jacked up. Like this guy looks like he's either got a very strange look on his face uh, or he's got some jacked up teeth. Oh, I said make Billy bigger. <laughs> Let's make Billy bigger. That's what Paulita said. Good one. <laughs> Got it. <you. laughs> uh, poor Billy. I'm sure he was big enough. Uh, in any event, so the guy's got kind of a jacked up mouth, uh, which could be an indication of some bad teeth underneath that, which would be you know kind of difficult to, to get a closure on his mouth. Um, uh, let's see what else we can tell from this one before I show you the side by side. Uh, he's certainly got the dark hair. The shoulders are relatively narrow, a little bit sloping. Um, the, uh, the, the chin is kind of rounded. Doesn't certainly look as rounded as it does in the famous tin type. Um, he's got the, the eyes seem different to me. Billy's uh, eyes, at least uh, from the tin type that we have, uh, seem to be set pretty straight horizontally. They didn't, kind of uh, tear, not tear down, but tilt down like these eyes do. Um, but he did have the light, uh, light eyebrows. So, hey, there's Maddie Marinara, star of, yes, that's right, the ruins of legend. Maddie's in there. Uh, nice to be here. Nice to have you here. Um, so I, uh, I look at it and go, hmm, I don't know, maybe, but I'm going to show you a side-by-side uh, -side comparison and uh, see if that changes your mind at all. La -da -da -da, La -da now, you might say, hey, you're doing a side-by-side -side comparison and it's not to Billy the Kid. That's your right. And so here we go with that. Well, son of a gun, check it out there. Does this guy with the jacked up mouth on the right and the squarish kind of face and the short, you know, dark hair and the slight kind of frame, does he look like Croquet Billy with the jacked up squarish face? Now, the look, the, the, the Croquet tintype has got an issue because half the face is is kind of messed up I mean, whether the guy moved or not i don't know or damaged to the uh the original tin type but you look at these two guys side by side i look at it and go okay they could be the same now the one thing i that stands out to me um when i look at that is that the guy on the right seems to be wider in the hips but if you look at the the guy on the left, it looks like he's wearing a pair of skinny jeans, <laughs> like he's going clubbing tonight, and uh, he is, uh, <laughs> you know, he's dressed and ready for action. The guy on that's the guy on the left. The guy on the right, uh, as you look at it, uh, it, it, the clothes are much bigger, much more ill-fitting. This certainly could be a photographer's suit. It's uh, it's possible, 
and uh, that the pants are kind of high waisted. So it's difficult to get an accurate representation, but I could see one of those guys being the other guy. Um, I don't have a problem with that. So the question is, are they, and where does the North Carolina connection come up? Because nothing about the, the, uh, the, the, uh, Croquet tin type comes uh, from a Bowdry family member. It's in Fresno, California, and uh, the uh, it has no connection to North Carolina. The, the photo on the right comes from a collection in North Carolina, but was not taken there. We don't have any more details from Josefina at this point. Um, Bullyhead says, could the guy on the right have guns underneath that jacket? I would say so. I mean, you certainly could. The thing I don't, whoops, uh, the thing I, I, I guess I don't get is why hide guns underneath your jacket if you're going to have your photo taken, unless you're afraid of being killed imminently. And this is clearly indoors. You can see that there's a, a photographic background there with some painting of uh, shrubs and stuff like that. So why not just take your guns off? I don't know. Maybe they were, but I don't know that these guys were imminently in danger every moment of their lives. Um, people say, I've seen people say definitively that the croquet billy has guns underneath his sweater, you know, tucked into his waistband. You can't prove that. <laughs> you can't prove that at all. It could just be an ill-fitting sweater or just bulky or that's just the way it was. So I don't know that either of them have guns underneath their coats, but if you were going to make a case for that, I would say it would make more sense maybe for the for the croquet billy photo. But would that spoil your wedding photo, guys with guns? I mean, these guys were warriors. They were on uh, uh, they were on the uh, you know, on the on the hunt for. Well, at least at this point, they were looking for revenge because the Lincoln County War was over in September of 1878. Um, but would it be so bad to have guns in your wedding photo? I mean these guys were, were fighting. So uh, when I see no guns in the croquet photo, none whatsoever, it leads me to believe there was no guns there. There certainly wasn't any other photos where these guys were reluctant to brandish their weapons. And uh, you can disagree, uh, but we all have our own opinion. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what uh, Tammy says. Uh, maybe the clothes and the guy in the right, was wearing funeral or gambling clothes. Yeah, could be, could be. Um, you know, I don't know if he had a funeral suit. He might have only had one suit back then. Maybe, maybe he had a borrow a suit. So, you know, that it's a little ill-fitting, uh, I don't think is any indictment of the guy. I think it's just there wasn't, uh, there wasn't much available. Uh, Montgomery says there's a gun under the hat plus some beef jerky. So that's good. Beef jerky uh, always uh, it lasts a long time out on the trail. Um, Bullyhead says, I wonder if the ears are attached or detached. Well, we can go back, Bullyhead, and we can take a look. And uh, I can tell you that it's, to me, it's indeterminate. It looks like they are kind of square, uh, but it does not look exactly like the earlobes that we see in the traditional tin type. Um, so that would be a, uh, you know, a disqualifier, but this guy matches up much more closely to the, uh, the croquet photo than he does to the actual Billy tin type that we know and love. Uh, but there are some similarities that the, the mouth is crooked. The teeth are probably not great. This chin is rounded, doesn't have a dimple in it. Uh, you know, it's got the, it looks like it's got the right color hair. The build is similar. Um, but again, unless there's some huge piece of provenance that is uh, undiscovered, uh, then I don't think we're ever going to know. And I think it'll just be one of those where if you want it to be Billy, it was. Rollins says maybe the guy on the right is Billy Barlow. Uh, funny you mentioned that because we're going to see Billy Barlow's grave when we go to the cemetery this Friday. I'm going to show you where his body was moved to, according to at least one old timer there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Drew has a good question. Why did they all have jacked up ears back then? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I mean, look, my ears are, people say they're way too small for my head. So that's, um, <laughs> that's an issue. Uh, but there's, there's people that have jacked up ears today. I think there's more people with jacked up teeth back then because you didn't have as good dental care, but I, you know, who knows? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know, Drew. Uh, maybe it was all the hat wearing or the, you know, sleeping on hard surfaces or, uh, who knows? Who knows? Bullyhead says, I wish it was clear. It looks similar to the croquet photo picture, but agree doesn't to the famous tin type. Could this be the guy in the croquet photo and not be Billy the Kid? Sure, could be. Um, are we going to be able to find that out? I don't know, but I'll ask Josefina if she is listening, watching. Hey, can you get us some more details and see what we're uh, see what we're missing? Oh, Lori has a good uh, <laughs> a good idea. The guy in the suit is brushy. Um, yeah, well. Uh, I, I mean, it could be brushy had kind of that square face, right? He had the dimple or the cleft in his chin that this guy doesn't seem to have. And he had the long attached earlobes, but look, Hey, it could be brushy. It could be anybody. Um, it could be Bozo the clown. <laughs> I mean, we're just, we're just not going to know, which is why it's fun to speculate, but I'm going to go back to what I've, what I've said um, at this late date uh, with, all of the, I mean, the number of really thorough and professional researchers that have gone before us and have looked for this stuff. I think the chances of another authenticated Billy the Kid photo are almost zero. Um, you know, the, the chain of provenance would, would run through so few people that, you know, Billy was close enough to, and, and those people and families have been explored, have been talked to, have been researched. So uh, I think there's a, a good chance that we'll never have another undisputed, authenticated photo. And we certainly don't, even with the croquet photo, although it's been authenticated by Kagan's, there's lots of people that don't accept that as being Billy the Kid and question the authentication of it um, and the identification of a number of people there. So even that one, uh, with the massive effort that went into it, uh, is not proven beyond any shadow of a doubt. So um, I don't think we're going to find any more. So what you do is you get, by the way, David says, best pick your show is Pupils. Yes, Pupils was, he was, uh, he was one of my favorites too. <laughs> Very surprised. He, he perennially surprised by everything in his life. So his eyes were wide open. Um, but the, the, I guess the great thing about this is you all get to decide for yourselves now. You all get to determine, hey, this one's Billy, this one's not. And if you think it's Billy, take take the photo, print it out, put it in a frame, put it on your wall. And that's Billy the Kid. Um, and, and, and there's nothing – who would be able to dispute that? So I really, uh, I really uh, would encourage you to decide for yourself. Misty forgot about pupils. How could you, Misty? He was one of your favorites at the time. B.L. Atterbury. I think there may be more if Joe's family would step up. Yeah, well, as far as we know, um, Joe's family hasn't stepped up. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, there, there, could be, there could be more photos of Joe, which I think would be interesting to see him as a young man. And, uh, you know, an authenticated photo and see maybe there'd be a picture of he and Billy together. Um, but even if not, it would be interesting to see Joe's physical characteristics as a young man and then compare it to some of these other photos of Billy. Uh, yeah. Uh, Drew says, I thought Billy had a feminine looking face, according to close friends, that face isn't feminine. Um, I don't know if I ever heard feminine other than from Chano Silva, but I certainly heard uh, young, young looking, uh, you know, not very man, not manly, but Boily, <laughs> maybe I don't know. <laughs> Lori says exploitation of Billy's life. Friends kept them all from talking. On the flip side, they wouldn't have talked if he was alive either. Um, and Misty's very sorry that she forgot about pupils. Pupils Bonnie, we call him. <laughs> pupils Bonnie. Gosh, I got to work that name into a. Uh, I got to work that whole guy into one of the one of the books I'm writing. I think that would be great. Uh, maybe I could get permission to use the photo in there. That would be terrific. Um, all right. And speaking of, uh, uh, of uh, stories and those kind of things, uh, why don't you listen to this? Lincoln, New Mexico is in ruins. 
Who will be able to save it? Martin Teebs? Oh, or Asshole Lee? Zenobia Romero? Or Winky? Rosita Luna? Or Yukon Kim? Billy the Kid? Or Fred the Woodworker? Taking place during Billy Palooza, Book 8 in the Back to Billy Saga, The Ruins of Legend, by Michael Anthony Giudicisi. Pre-order today, wherever books are sold. All right, don't pre-order today because the book's out. You don't have to pre-order. You can order it. You can get your copy shipped right to you. Um, I want to tell you something. I want to thank everyone who's read any of the Back to Billy series. Um, man, I wrote this morning because I got a, a, I saw another review on Amazon. I said, I'm never going to get rich from being an author. I'll never make a living as, as an author. Um, and I, I get that, right. You know, uh, you know, working as a small publisher, you know, you got a lot of handicaps and books are just hard to sell, but I so appreciate everybody that's read any of the series. And I have said, I know if you've been with me for a while, um, you've heard me say, I'm asking you to review the book, good, bad, or indifferent. I don't care what you write. I've never asked anybody for a, a good review or a five-star review or to say anything specifically. I just ask you to go review it so that you have the opportunity to uh, uh, you know, have, share your opinion with others who might be interested. But with that said, all the Back to Billy series, all eight of the books, every single review is five stars. And that doesn't happen very often because there's certainly people right here right now that are looking at me going, oh, if I could give this jerk one star, I would, or I hate his, his approach, or I hate his beliefs, or those kind of things. And they let me know in the comments and in emails and in death threats and that kind of stuff. Like I hear all of that. Um, but uh, for, for whatever reason, the, the Back to Billy series has really resonated uh, with people and they've enjoyed it there. I'm sure there are people that haven't, but they haven't taken the time to review it, which uh, in the world of the internet, usually when people have something bad to say, they speak right up. And when they have something good to say, they don't really say much of anything. So all, every book has nothing but five star reviews. And, uh, and I greatly appreciate those folks, but I would appreciate a four or three or two or one star review. So if you've read any of the Back to Billy series, if you wouldn't mind going to Amazon and uh, clicking on the book you went, you can just search for me, Michael Anthony Giudicisi. You'll go to my author's page. All the books are there, all the links. If you have a good review, great. If you have a bad review, great. If you haven't read any, I would love if you did. Don't start with this one. Start with Back to Billy, the first book in the series, second edition, totally rewritten, ready for you. And uh, I think I would like to uh, share uh, this review with you because I, la da dee da da dee da da, because I just want to read it. And I was really, <laughs> I was really happy to see it. Da, 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 da. And this one comes from Rollin. There's no, uh, there's no uh, hiding that. Let me see if I can get this shared with you all, y'all. And there it is from Rollin. Like a roller coaster in the pitch dark, one thrilling turn after another. So just when I think I know where the story is going to go, or maybe where I think I want it to go, it takes off in another direction altogether. This is number three in the series, and each one leaves the reader ready for the next chapter and the next volume. <clears throat> to think this was supposed to be a trilogy, and what a blessing that there uh, are several more volumes in print and rumors of more coming. This is a series you can't stop at just one or even three. I recommend these to any lover of historical fiction or of the Lincoln County War. Well, that makes most of us. So thank you for that, Rollin. I really, really appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, if you're a, uh, <laughs> a fan of the Lincoln County War, I really do think you'll like it. Look, I look at historical fiction and go, mm, not really sure. I think the characters and the relationships and the 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 time travel modern day guy back and forth aspect and, and then, you know, how this whole thing uh, kind of blows up in his face. I think it will capture you. So 
if you're so inclined, please give it a chance. And uh, yeah, give it a read and we'll, uh, we'll see. All right. What's on your mind? Uh, because we are drawing, our time is nigh. <laughs> uh, I've got to go back over. So uh, just so you know, we, we closed on some property today, a lot in uh, Nakona Hills, just adjacent to Lake Nakona in North Texas. And uh, the lot has got a couple of ponds on it in the back. Um, there's no home or anything. So that's something over the next couple of years, hopefully we'll be developing. But uh, I was out here to do the closing and uh, just really excited to get back over there, get some more pictures and videos for, for my wife, who's never been out here. Um, and and uh, so that's the reason that we started early today. But uh, if you've got things on your mind, now would be a great time to talk about them. We will be back in two weeks. You have a homework assignment to do, and that is write up your version of what you think Pat Garrett would have said if he told the real truth, right? Many of you don't believe Garrett told the truth. And so I want to, I'd like your letter in the, you know, in the, the, uh, the words of Pat Garrett. I think that would be great. Uh, Lori says, I think some of our opinions are closer to the truth than real history tells us. Yeah, very possibly. I mean, somebody got it right, right? Of all the thousands, hundreds of thousands, whatever, a uh, number of people that follow the story of Billy the Kid, somebody's had an opinion that's spot on, but they didn't know it. They just think, they said, here's the way I think it happened. And they are correct. <laughs> Regrettably, <laughs> we don't have the proof of that. Um, there was, I uh, ah, forget it. I don't want to talk about Brushy Bill. Um, but th there's all of these, you know, alternate stories or theories or, you know, here's the detail that was left out that people believe some people say they know, but if you know, it, it means there has to be proof, but I'm certain if Garrett's story was not told accurately, that somebody has already figured out what it is probably many times over the, I guess the crime, the historical crime is we just don't know which one that is. And we're, we're just simply not ever going to know unless on July 14th, this Friday at 11.57 p.m., we get paid a visit by somebody. Uh, maybe there's some, I don't know, supernatural. Maybe there's some time travel, uh, 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 you know, circling the drain. We get sucked into the past momentarily. Who knows what could happen? I don't believe in any of that stuff. But I also have been through stuff that I didn't believe happened and I can't explain it. So there's a chance that maybe this Friday we figure the whole thing out. Could you imagine the 10, 15, 20 people, whatever it is, that come down to Fort Sumner this week and we get to travel back in time to that, uh, to that night? Could you imagine how that would be if we go back and we document it all? We've all got we've all got our iPhones and we're taking pictures and we're uh, interviewing participants with the voice recorder. Um, <laughs> that would be unbelievable. And then we come back to the present. And we're all sitting there at eleven fifty nine in front of the grave, going, "What the hell just happened?" Uh, I can't believe that. And then everybody checks their phone. Look, I still got the pictures. Yeah, I got the audio. And now. We've got the whole thing solved. I wonder what I wonder what we would do. Like, how would you would you tell us? Not it wouldn't be up to me to tell. Like everybody should get the opportunity to tell what they saw and heard. Do you think people would come here? Would it be like one of those things when there's a tragedy? Like everybody writes a book. Uh, like when uh, when Sully lands that plane on the Hudson River and saves everybody. The co-pilot, the pilot, the flight attendants, the passengers, everybody writes a book, um, <laughs> you know, and, and everybody's got a different opinion. Would that be the way it is? Could you imagine we go back in time, we figure it out, we come back, 10 of us write a book and it's 10 different stories because that's the way people receive information. And then we go, oh, no wonder <laughs> the, the, the history was all jacked up because everybody was right based on their own perception of what happened. My sense is that's probably what would have happened. 
Um, uh, <laughs> Rollin says the, the ghost of Pedro Maxwell will be giving us his excuses. If we hear somebody, we hear running footsteps and somebody screaming like a little girl at 11.57, I know it's going to be Pete Maxwell and his grave is just, uh, just off to the side. Uh, oops, where is it? Go, go, Gonzo says, hey, are you going any, live at any time Friday? Uh, yeah, we will... Um, Yes, there's a good uh, good cell signal in the uh, cemetery, uh, so I'll bring a tripod and we'll stream a little live on YouTube uh, from the grave site. I can't uh, vouch for how good the sound will be because when people are far away and there's talking and different things, it may not be great. But yeah, if you want to be there live with us, uh, we'll definitely do that. Uh, that would be... 2 a.m., just before 2 a.m. Eastern uh, Daylight Time. Uh, but we'll probably go about 1.30 a.m. So 11.30 Mountain Time, we'll probably go live and uh, maybe we'll just let it run for a while. Um, and uh, you can, uh, yeah, you can listen in or feel like you're you're, you're there with us. Um, Lori thinks we'll have, we'll have to buy him shots first. We'll go over to to uh, uh, Beaver Smiths or uh, Be uh, not Bob Beck with uh, what's the other saloon there? Um, uh, yeah, we would go over to Beaver Smiths, have a couple shots, buy him. Uh, then we'll do our interviews. We'll take our pictures. Everybody poses with Billy outside of Beaver Smiths and that the famous pose, and uh, and then we come back to the present. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry. Yes, we did start one hour earlier because I am in Texas and uh, I've got somewhere I need to be. So uh, my apologies for that. But we've had great fun. So f please feel free to go back and watch uh, and go back and watch. Um, all right. Let's see. Joe says, amazing. There are so many potential Billy possible photos. I've done a lot of family re research. And only have one photo from the 1880s, and lucky to have the one we have. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you're 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 spot on there. That uh, you know, having that one photo that we have of Billy uh, is is kind of a, a historical gift. We have no photos of Jesse Evans that we know of. Uh, we have no photos of Dirty Steve Stevens. We have no photos of. Uh, Big Jim French. I mean, so like there's plenty of um, people that are, you know, relatively important to the story that there's no photos of that. We have one of Billy that we can connect that and, and, and look, you can look into his eyes, even though they're almost closed. Um, yeah, for sure. I think it's, uh, I think it's quite uh, amazing that it's survived. So there we go. All right. What have we learned today? We've learned that you're going to write what Pat Garrett <laughs> really wanted to say, uh, if he would tell the truth. We've learned that we have another photo that's more likely to be Croquet Billy than Beaver Smith Billy. <laughs> Beaver, <laughs> let's call him Beaver Billy from now on. I like that. <laughs> Beaver Billy is, is the known <laughs> tin type. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the photo we saw looks way more like croquet. I really am hearing like something walking around. Is there something moving behind me or, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's kind of freaking me out, but Hey, we're, we'll have to live with it. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, croquet Billy and the new Billy, the kid photo potentially look alike, but they don't look like beaver Billy and, uh, beaver Billy has a look all on <laughs> <laughs> all unto himself. Uh, okay. And Tammy says, uh, and talking about July 14, I think you have more chances of somebody telling you they're talking to the spirits. Yeah. Well, I've, Tammy, I've had a lot of people tell me that over the last couple of years. Uh, unfortunately, when I ask for details, every single story is different. Um, so there you go. Uh, Steve says it's Billy a couple days early. Mm, no, not sure. Um, uh, not sure what you mean, Steve. Uh, we're this Friday, we're going to the cemetery. Montgomery says, uh, Beaver Billy, that's also simultaneously a joke about his jacked up teeth. That's true. 
uh, uh, Rollin thinks Beaver Billy is uh, rolling over in his grave and reacting to his new name. Uh, and it uh, seems like uh, Misty James uh, likes it too. Beaver Billy. I'm going to see if we can make that catch on. I. Oh, oh, I see. Steve said uh, maybe it's Billy showing up a couple days early behind me. Yeah, I, I don't see anything, but I'm hearing stuff like back here. And there's no animals or hopefully no snakes or anything. Uh, yeah. So. There you go. Uh, yeah, maybe maybe so. Maybe he doesn't like Beaver Billy, or maybe he's getting a real kick out of it. Maybe he loves the name. Billy, Beaver, those things together, only good things could happen, right? I mean, that's... <laughs> oh, God. All right. Hey, thank you for joining me. Um, if you haven't booked a tour with Brandon, the motorcycle tour, the Lincoln tour, and you're, you're going anywhere near Lincoln, I really, really suggest that you do. Uh, if you're coming out, uh, you've got the schedule for this Friday, but if you don't or you have uh, more questions, please, by all means, reach out. Billy the Kid rides again at gmail.com. Hey, there's Cool's Paranormal. Um, that's Keegan. Hey, Keegan, there's a special episode of your show that people are going to want to watch. And it's kind of a deep dive, not kind of, it is a deep dive into young guns. When is that going to be released? Is it going to be Friday? Um, because we want people to know so they can watch it. So can you please give us a, a little scoop here and we will, uh, yeah, we'll be, uh, we'll be prepared for that. Uh, and one of the guests on that was, yours truly. So let's see what Keegan has to say about the Young Guns deep dive, which was out really a lot of fun. Um, so, oh, Matthew said, Matthew Rastelli, nice Italian boy, uh, says, I love your shows. Thank you, Matthew. I, I love that you're here. That's really nice of you to say. Appreciate that. Um, Steve says, if you haven't subscribed yet, trust me, it's worth it. Yes, you can become a channel member. The way you can do that is hit the join tab on the uh, main page and there's a bunch of extra videos for channel members. Um, the, uh, the last one, <laughs> the one from this week is how about Billy, the kid's dog. Did you know Billy had a dog and that it survived him and what happened to it after that? And uh, we, we did a little research and try to figure out what kind of dog it was. So you can take a look at that. Brandon Hill says, Hey, Hey, Brandon, thanks for stopping by. Um, and uh, we're still waiting for Keegan to tell us, are we going to see, this week, um, are we going to see that uh, the D Young Guns deep dive? Lori Alexander has a lovely comment. I love that you let us have an opinion. Yeah. Hey, most – look, we research the facts here, right? But there are relatively few facts when it comes to the life of Billy the Kid, you know, in comparison of a guy who was 20 years old when he died. Uh, and so all we have left are opinions, sometimes held more strongly than others. But I'm as fascinated by your opinions as people might be with mine. And um, and it, that's that's what we have to talk about. That's what we have. Casper the Ghost says, love the show, Mag. See you on Friday. Yes, absolutely. We'll see you on Friday. Wear pants, not shorts. Uh, bug spray will be uh, <laughs> will probably be good and uh, lots of hydration because uh, it's probably going to be well over 100 degrees uh, there. All right. Well, Keegan's not answering. I think if you're not a uh, uh, a subscriber to Cools, I think that's the way they pronounce it. I know it's Keegan, C-U-L-Z, Cools Paranormal, you should be. Because uh, they've got some great videos. Uh, they went to the cemetery to check up on our Delavina Maxwell uh, Memorial. But uh, there, there is going to be, I think it's going to be this week, I think it's going to be Friday, a, uh, a, a video uh, doing a deep dive into young guns, you know, taking a look at the fact versus fiction, um, and uh, also some of the... Uh, you know, some of the, the slip ups and goofs in that. Um, and, uh, uh, Jurel, uh, Vas, is it Vasport? Gosh, I, I can't remember Jurel's last name, but he played Billy the Kid in the Nat Geo special about, uh, the uh, croquet Billy. Uh, he's the actor that portrayed him and he was there and he had watched Young Guns for the first time the night before we filmed it. Uh, I think it's Vasport. And uh, so Jarrell came on there and it was pretty cool to hear from somebody ha that hadn't grown up with Young Guns and just literally watched it 
for the first time the night before we started talking about it. So be on the lookout for Cools Paranormal, Cools Paranormal and go ahead and subscribe to them. Bullyhead, thank you so much. Uh, appreciate that. Good to see you all again. It's been two weeks, too long, but um, but uh, we're, we're back in two weeks at our regular time. And I think I will be, uh, he, uh, I think I'll be back in the studio then. So we don't need to worry about uh, our connection or those kind of things. Colin says, have fun in the graveyard on Friday. Yeah. And that's a, that's an interesting <laughs> way to say it, but yeah, we should, we should have a fun time in the graveyard and maybe just maybe we'll have a, uh, uh, do you know what a, a group of vultures is called by the way? Um, anybody? group of vultures it's not a flock it's called a wake w-a-k-e -E, a wake of vultures um and uh so we may have a wake of vultures joining us if we do then we'll know we're under the watchful eye of martin teebs uh rosita luna lily teebs uh billy the kid and <laughs> essential um uh, yeah da -da -da. all right gang oh Misty James says, Mag, have you seen there's a new Billy film out in August? No, I have not seen that. Uh, what film is it? I would love to uh, learn more about it. I haven't seen that come across my, uh, my radar or my desk. What is the uh, name of the film? Who's in it? Those kind of things. And I'll look into it and see what I can find out. But August is only three weeks away. So, yeah, we better get on it if it's... Uh, if it's going to be a big one, <laughs> if it's going to be a big one, um, da, 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 da. you're not late, Susan. We were early one hour early today. My apologies. Um, so Misty's going to give us some information on this new Billy, the kid film, and we'll take a look and uh, see. Yeah. Maybe it's uh, something to go see. <clears throat> I'd love to uh, find out more about it. Anyway, gang, Thank you so much for being here, for joining me. Uh, I am, oh, it's advertised on YouTube, Misty James says. A new Billy the Kid film in August. Has anyone heard about this? Advertised on YouTube? Uh, it would seem there'd be an advert, like that's the kind of thing that would hit Facebook if you're in any Billy the Kid groups. There probably would be a link. Is it, maybe it's a small indie film? Um but I haven't seen it. If anyone has or has the link to the YouTube advertisement, uh, I would love to see that and look into it more and maybe we can uh, figure out what's going on there. Um, all right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. I thought this would be a short episode, um, but our internet connection held out and that's good. Uh, the killing of Billy the Kid. Uh Da, 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 The Killing of Billy the Kid. So somebody wrote this. Ba, da, ba, ba, ba. Let's see if I can. Uh, hey, we're here. Let's take a few minutes. Let's see if I can find it. The, whoops. The Killing of Billy the Kid movie. Whoops. Movie. Killing of Billy the Kid, 2023, YouTube, ITN movies. Um, <laughs> I don't know who ITN movies are. I don't want to play this official trailer. Okay, that's cool. Whoops, stop that. Uh, yeah, I see a trailer for it. Um, I can't tell much about the film. Um, and I don't want to play their trailer here because I don't have permission. I don't even know what's on it. So I'm going to take a look at that. But if you search for The Killing of Billy the Kid, there's a trailer. Uh, it looks like it'll be out this year and uh, might be something cool to uh, to check out. So, all right, everybody. Uh, appreciate you all for being here. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. If you're a channel member, keep take a look behind the iron curtain for some new videos coming up until then i'm your host michael anthony judas sissy i appreciate you all have a great day in uh, texas forever